Welcome back to Wardcast, guys. Hope you're all doing well out there. I'm your host, Rod, as always. And in this video, we're going to be talking about another defeat for the sore loser of the year, 2022, Carrie Lake, getting her ass kicked once again in motions at the Supreme Court of Arizona after losing at the appeals courts, the uh, first division appeals courts, and then appealing up to the Supreme Court and losing at the Supreme Court yesterday. When it comes to sanctions that were asked by the Katie Hobbs side against Carrie Lake's lawyer for bringing a frivolous legal claim, specifically the claim that a third party vendor named Runbeck stole or injected, I should say, not stole, stole the election in favor of Katie Hobbs overall. But their specific claim is that 35,563 votes were injected by this random third party vendor into the election to help Katie Hobbs defeat Carrie Lake. That is the claim that Carrie Lake perpetrated on the public and thousands of people and hundreds of thousands of people probably believe it all across the country. It's completely false. This is an editor's note that I forgot to mention regarding this uh, company Runbeck. Just like Dominion sued Fox News for their election lies, Runbeck should sue Carrie Lake for basically making them out to be criminals who tried to steal the election in favor of the Democrats. So hopefully in the future, Runbeck sues Carrie Lake. That would be awesome, and I'll be covering it if and when that happens. Now, let's get back to the video. And he was proven false at trial when she couldn't prove it because it was just made up. Probably some Twitter jackass made it up. And uh, Carrie Lake spread it to thousands of, if not uh, hundreds of thousands of people okay, on her social media. So that was the specific claim that was under dispute. The Katie Hobbs and Fontas side asked the appeals courts to sanction the lawyer. They uh, upheld the sanctions. Carrie Lake side was not happy with that. They appealed it up to the Supreme Court and they got their ass kicked at the Supreme Court yesterday on the 5th of May. So now before we get to the legal papers here, I just want to explain briefly why this is a welcome development. I love this. And that is because jackasses like Kerry Lake, who are just starved for political attention, will keep making claims like this. The only people who are truly responsible for bringing these to court are the lawyers because they're the ones who know the law. Kerry Lake is an idiot, one of the dumbest people in America, and has never seen a law book, let alone read one. She's a failed newsreader from TV. She has no qualifications whatsoever to understand the law or to practice law. So I don't expect idiots like Kerry Lake and Donald Trump to know the law and to know what a violation it is to make false, uncolorable claims in court, claims that are not viable in any sense of the word, but just to help your client push their political agenda of trying to delegitimize American democracy, this lawyer brought this case. And that's the link in the conspiracy chain that you have to break. And that's what the judges should be doing, trial judges specifically, but the Supreme Court and the appeals courts also have the opportunity to do it. And I'm glad that the Supreme Court has upheld this sanction against this lawyer. Okay, so sanctions are bad for many reasons, obviously, uh, on a lawyer's record. It's a black mark on your record when you get judicially sanctioned by the judge uh, in a trial or by the Supreme Court. That's even worse when the uh, sanctions are upheld by the Supreme Court. No matter how low the sanctions are, he has to pay like a $2,000 fine, but it doesn't matter if it's $50. The point is getting a black mark on their record. That means that when they apply to become a judge or when they want to become a partner in their law firm, that black mark is going to haunt them right? You're going to be passed up for that promotion in your law firm if you have a black mark on your record. So if you want to be successful as a lawyer, you want to abide by the rules of procedure in court. If it, When it comes to federal court, you have to abide by the rules of evidence, the civil procedures, the criminal procedures, and similar things in all the states. They also have their own rules of procedure when it comes to criminal law, civil law, and the rules of evidence. Every state has their own version of the federal rules of evidence. And the lawyers, are the lawyers, no matter if they're prosecutors or defense attorneys, they, they all have to abide by the rules. And if they don't, they're get, they get sanctioned. So it's important for these to exist because the fact that your career is going to be stunted when you get these is encouragement for the lawyers to not act out and not to bring false claims and waste everybody's time. Instead of telling the truth to Carrie Lake and saying, you don't have a viable legal claim here, you don't have any evidence of election fraud, so I'm not going to help you with this. Instead of saying that, they took up the lawsuit and they brought it. So that is an ethical violation. That's why they're being punished here. 
So this is very important. If we can't punish the conspiracy theories directly, because basically anybody can bring a lawsuit, but the lawyers are the a link in the chain that we can punish, that the judicial system has the authority to punish. Every lawyer who has a bar license is subject to the laws and regulations of the bar in their state that they're registered with to respect the rules of the court and act ethically when you come in front of a judge. So with that prologue in mind, let's jump to the legal papers and take a look at what the Supreme Court Justice here had to say. So like I said before, this decision was issued yesterday and we're not going to be going through everything as always. I'm going to be summarizing the most important parts here for you guys, but this is the decision. So Kerry Lake versus Katie Hobbs and also Kerry Lake versus the original trial judge. By the way, the last time we talked about this, one of Kerry Lake's uh, claims were sent back to the trial court. She got a half victory, I think last month, I talked about it in my last video, based on the signature verification claim, where the Supreme Court ruled that lashes were was not a valid legal argument for the trial judge to use to dismiss her claim regarding these uh, signature verifications. So that will have to be re-adjudicated by the trial judge, and he should be making a decision about that particular claim soon, but that's not what we're talking about here but they briefly discuss that before we move on to today's claims which are regarding these so-called injected ballots which is a lie that she told so I want to read this paragraph here because it's very important it basically highlights everything that we're talking about here and what is a fair challenge and an unfair challenge to an election so the Supreme Court justice here says the following candidates are free to timely challenge election procedures and results and the public has a strong interest in ensuring the integrity of elections sometimes campaigns and their attendant hyperbole spill into legal challenges but once a contest enters the judicial arena rules of attorney ethics apply Although we must ensure that legal sanctions are never wielded against candidates or their attorneys for asserting their legal rights in good faith, we also must diligently enforce the rules of ethics on which public confidence in our judicial system depends and where the truth-seeking function of our adjudicative process is unjustifiably hindered. RCAP 25 authorizes an appellate court to impose sanctions on an attorney if the court determines that an appeal or a motion is frivolous and provides that, quote, an appellate court may impose sanctions that are appropriate in the circumstances of the case and to discourage similar conduct in the future. Other rules similarly require candor, aka honesty, in court proceedings. And that is according to Arizona's Rules of Civil Procedure 11. Like I said, every state has their own criminal procedures, civil procedures, and their own rules of evidence. There's a federal rules of evidence and federal rules of criminal procedures, federal rules of civil procedure, and the states themselves have their own version of those civil procedures, and that's what they're talking about here. Under Arizona law, the specific law claims are sanctionable if they are brought without substantial justification. Further, without substantial justification means that the claim or defense is groundless and is not made in good faith. Furthermore, regarding the specific claim that Kerry Lake made, Kerry Lake has repeatedly asserted that it is an undisputed fact that 35,563 ballots were added or injected at Runback, the third party vendor. So this was a vendor that was involved in administering the election. I'm not sure about specifically what they did, but that's not really relevant because it's up to Kerry Lake to make the claim, show the evidence to the court exactly how they did this and evidence that they did do it. And Kerry Lake was not able to demonstrate that. As the Court of Appeals observed, Lake's argument was focused on one exhibit that included an estimate of the number of early ballot packets uh, based on the number of trays and a different exhibit showing a precise count. So that was her so-called evidence, an estimate of early ballot packets. No, no evidence after the election took place that anything had been added or stolen, just early estimates. That's, that, that's what these idiots think is evidence. They have no idea what the word evidence means. Although Lake may have permissibly argued that an inference could be made, inference, that's not evidence, uh, made some ballots were added, there is no evidence that 35,563 ballots were, and more to the point, this was certainly disputed by the respondents. The representation that this was an undisputed fact is therefore unequivocally false. She had no facts, okay? There were no 35,000 plus ballots added. She could not prove that because it didn't happen, that's why. And 
But nevertheless, she wants to believe the delusion that she actually lost. So she has to make up something. And she uh, glommed onto this conspiracy. I told you, Quentin, nobody's ever going to call me paranoid again. We got to get out of here and blow the lid off this thing. Holloway, this may be hard for you to understand, but there is no conspiracy. Nobody is in charge. It's, it's a headless blunder operating under the illusion of a master plan. Can you grasp that? Big Brother is not watching you. Because Lake's attorney has made false factual statements to the court, we conclude that the extraordinary remedy of a sanction under uh, RCAP 25 is appropriate. He went on to conclude it is further ordered granting the motion for sanctions filed by Governor Hobbs and Secretary Fontas pursuant to RCAP 25 as to the statement uh, regarding the votes as we just went through. It is further ordered counsel for Lake is directed to pay to the clerk of the Supreme Court the sum of $2,000 as a sanction for this conduct. The Supreme Court did deny Hobbs and um, Fontas' request for recouping of attorney's fees here, as you guys can see. So they also lost on a matter, but that's nothing compared to getting sanctioned by the Supreme Court of Arizona. This is really bad for her lawyer. So closing thoughts here, one of the most effective ways to stop these kind of election denying, democracy denying lawsuits is to punish enough lawyers and ruin enough litigation records to the point where lawyers are even afraid to touch cases like this. That is the only way that this can be stopped at a legal level, right? From things coming into the courtroom, if the lawyers are too scared to bring these frivolous, false, unethical claims, then that's a great way to stop these lawsuits before they even begin. And I think that's a very, very reasonable place for us to reach. It's not that much to ask the lawyers to act honestly and ethically when they bring lawsuits to not waste everybody's time by suing people when they know that they have no valid arguments, no viable legal arguments to be made in court. That's why they lost on every single claim in front of the trial judge, a Republican trial judge, by the way. Republican or not, the judge could not possibly agree with Kerry Lake because they weren't able to prove a single claim that they made in front of him. They had no evidence whatsoever to prove any fraud. The real truth of the matter is that Kerry Lake is a pathetic loser who lost to Katie Hobbs, which is pretty embarrassing because Katie Hobbs is not that impressive. Okay, and she didn't run a good campaign. I think she even dodged some of the debates. So not necessarily a big fan of Katie Hobbs, but nevertheless, I don't like the fact that Kerry Lake is lying to the country and trying to pretend like American democracy is somehow have, has been destroyed by the Democrats and by by the Chinese and, and whatever other groups that she's blaming uh, these days. It's always somebody different depending on how she's feeling. All these people who are trying to bring doubt into the American people's minds about the legitimacy of our elections have to be destroyed. People like Kerry Lake, and she'll be getting punished much worse if I was in power. She's lucky that our uh, judicial system is not as punitive as I would be. So Kerry Lake should be very thankful for that. But nevertheless, uh, that's a hypothetical story that we won't get into. The point is that justice has been served as far as the uh, lawyer in question goes. He deserves to have his judicial record ruined. And that's the bottom line for this video. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. If you want to see more of my videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to keep current with the videos that I'm making. And if you have been watching for a long time and appreciate my content and the time that I put into these videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I post all the legal documents I use in my videos on Patreon for my patrons. I also post extra legal content when I don't have time to make videos on Patreon for my patrons. As a patron, you can also contact me directly on Patreon to request a video or ask a question about a relevant topic. These are all privileges that I provide for my patron supporters. With all that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a very nice day.